Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the White House Family Devotions. We're so glad to have you with us, and we thank God that hundreds have already joined us uh, uh, since uh, last week when we started. And uh, this, <clears throat> this is designed. Uh, we're inviting you in to our family devotions. And this is designed to encourage you to have family devotions. So we expect you to one day peel off and get back to having family devotions or family altar uh, or whatever you want to call it, with your family. Not just you, but with your family. The family that prays together, stays together. That is a fact. It's old and trite, but it is true. Amen, somebody. Beloved, uh, it was once said that early African converts to Christianity were earnest and regular in private devotions. Each one reportedly had a separate spot in the thicket where he would pour out his heart to God. Over time, the paths to these places became well worn. As a result, if one of these believers began to neglect prayer, it was soon apparent to the others. They would kindly remind the negligent one, Brother, the grass grows on your path. Amen, somebody. Let's pray together. Holy Father God, help us to trust you uh, as your, as your children, as believers in Christ. Help us to love you back because you first loved us. Help us to fear you, reverence you, and respect you as we should to the point that we will we will be obedient and we will be faithful throughout this day, no matter what. Grant us your grace and the power of your Holy Spirit uh, to do that and help us to pray without ceasing. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for sake. Amen. Join us in reciting the Apostles' Creed or reading the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He was seen alive by Mary Magdalene. And by the way, I added this to the Apostles' Creed. And the other women, the disciples, and over 500 other brethren. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's turn to our devotional passage, if you will, in the Holy Word of God, Psalm 10. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? What accusations we uh, say against God. The wicked in his pride doeth persecute the poor. 
let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. Verse 3, For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire, and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous or grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight as for all his enemies he puffeth at them. He hath said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. On his tongue is mischief and vanity. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places doeth he murder the innocent. His eyes are privately set against the poor. He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth in wait to catch the poor. He doeth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. He croucheth and humbleth himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. He hath said in his heart, God hath forgotten, he hideth his face, he will never see it. Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up thine hand, forget not the humble. Wherefore doeth the wicked contemn God? He hath said in his heart, Thou wilt not require it. Thou hast seen it, for thou beholdest mischief and spite to requite it with thy hand. The poor committeth himself unto thee. Thou art the helper of the fearless. Break thou the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his wickedness till thou find none. The Lord is king forever and ever. The heathen are perished out of his land. Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Thou wilt prepare their heart. Thou wilt cause thine ear to hear, to judge the fatherless and the oppressed, that the man of the earth may no more oppress. And everybody said it, Amen to the Word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Warren Worsby writes in his commentary regarding this passage the problem in this psalm is the enemy invading from without while the problem in psalm 10 pardon me allow me to repeat that the problem in psalm 9 is the enemy invading from without while uh, the problem in Psalm 10 is the enemy corrupting and destroying from within. And this is what we see today in families. The, yes, the devil is attacking from the outside, the Christian family, but too many Christians, too many husbands, too many wives, too many teenagers are destroying their family from the inside. The same thing is happening in the church. And we all know that the same thing is happening in our government. Corruption from the inside. And our worst enemy is the person we look at in the mirror every day. Amen, somebody. There were wicked nations around Israel, but there were also wicked people within Israel, the covenant community. 
who claimed to know God, but whose lives proved they did not know God. And the proof, as they say, is in the pudding. They know there is a God. Pardon me. They know there is a God, but they live as though there is no God or no final judgment, and there is. It's just like the child who foolishly lives like there is no uh, chastisement coming, even though they were chastised yesterday. Uh, chastisement is coming, judgment is coming, and we need to act accordingly. Uh, they are practical atheists who are their own gods, little g-gods, and do whatever they please. <clears throat> With that said, ladies and gentlemen, let's pray for our governmental leaders. Whether you like them or not, it is our duty, as in the words of Tony Evans, our referees, uh, to uh, pray for whoever is in office, Democrat, Republican, Independent, whatever, makes no difference. It is our job to pray. So let's pray for our leaders instead of complaining and whining. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for President Donald Trump. We pray for salvation, spiritual life blessings upon him and his family. We pray for wisdom, knowledge, guidance, and understanding uh, to lead the government uh, properly and right in the way that it should uh, be uh, led. We pray these same blessings upon Vice President Mike Pence, First Lady Melania Trump, Second Lady Karen Pence, Presidential Aides, Deputy Assistant to the President, and Senior Advisor to the Chief of Staff, Sean uh, Karen Cross, uh, leaders of federal agencies such as Secretary of Agriculture, Sonny Perdue, state governors, New Mexico governor Susanna Martinez, city mayors, Birmingham, Alabama mayor William A. Bell. Uh, we pray these same blessings of wisdom, knowledge, guidance, and understanding upon them and U.S. senators and representatives, Wyoming Senator John Barrasso, all law enforcement officials, leaders of, and that is uh, uh, the sheriff and the deputy sheriffs, as well as the police chief and the officer on the beat, the newest one. Lord, protect them today in this sin-cursed world where demons are coming out of the works through people. Uh, we pray for the um, uh, charity concert with Ariana and all of the people joining her to be safe and not have another uh, terrorist attacks around them with your protection as they try to help the people who have been so hurt. We pray for the leaders of all nations around the world. We pray for President or rather King Jordan a king of Jordan rather and we pray that uh, you would uh, save these people we pray salvation spiritual life blessings upon them and we pray that you would lead God and direct them in the way that you want them to go we pray for Zimbabwe president Robert Gabriel Mugabe save his soul open his eyes lead God and direct him and leading his country we also pray for church leadership all across the country that you would uh, save some of our church leadership who are lost revive those who are saved and we pray for the leaders of the Southern Baptist Convention again we pray for Guidestone Financial Resources President O.S. Hawkins and uh, we pray for uh, President Gaines and uh, we pray for all of the Southern Baptist brothers uh, truly revive them again and use them to do what you want them to do in this country and around the globe we pray for current events around the world we pray for families of the victims in Portland Oregon train stabbings uh, a horrifying 
uh, a, a horrific situation, rather, and we pray that you will comfort those families as only you can. We pray for the provision of food, clean water, and protection for those affected by violence in the Central African Republic. And we pray for families of 31 people killed in Baghdad uh, just recently, Iraq bombings by the devilish group called ISIS. We pray for the families of 16 people killed by uh, thunderstorms in Moscow, Russia. Pray for the families of victims in Lincoln County, Mississippi, shooting rampage. We pray that you would comfort these people as only you can and provide for them as only you can and help us as Christians to do our part right where we are. And we pray, Lord, for the peace of Jerusalem and we pray for persecuted Christians around the world that you would prepare them and protect them as you see fit. Let your will be done in all of our lives and help us to realize that we could die today for the faith as well uh, and help us to stand like our brothers did on that bus in Egypt. Uh, Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ now for all of the people who have sent in prayer requests. Uh, Lord, we pray uh, for just a portion of uh, a much larger list today together. We pray uh, for Julie, help her with her finances, give her peace and calm in her heart, help her to trust in you. We pray for Nicholas, deliver him from depression, fear doubt, anxiety, worry, and sexual sin. Help him to trust in you, live for you, and resist temptation. Save his family and help him to be a witness to them. Deliver his mother from homosexuality, his brother from ODD, and his grandmother from depression. Help his aunt to come to know you, Lord Jesus, and help him to find a God-fearing church to attend and Lord this prayer request can be prayed over and over again for thousands of folks across the country who have multiple issues going on in their family because of sin and the devil. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for Marie, protect her and her son Dean from occult attacks and give them peace. We pray for Jorthy, uh, heal her of her tumor without her having to get an operation and protect her unborn baby. Give her baby, give her complete healing and uh, good health. Lord God in heaven you said in your word, Lord Jesus, uh, ask and ye shall receive, seek and ye shall find, knock and it shall be open unto you. Uh, Lord we pray for JTM, have the company he works for to pay him his salary, that is due him. Uh, we have some other people who have not been paid for labor and work. We pray that they will be paid today. Give him working speed and good courage. Bless his wife with the job you want her to have. Save his wife, his bosses, and his co-workers. And Holy Father God, we pray for Eric. Provide them with enough money so a boy in his church will be able to walk again. We pray that you would work a divine miracle there. Let your will be done. We pray for Joseph. Bless him to do well in school and bless his graduation this year. We pray for Bruciana, strengthen and guide her in her prayer life and bless her financially. We pray for Sabrat, bless and protect him, provide him with uh, education and enough money uh, and give him the right house to live in and uh, save him and help him to act right. And Lord, we do pray that you'll save his soul and we pray for Roger, give him courage to share his faith and please bless his book to be a blessing. We pray for Dottie, give her grace, mercy, peace, clarity and have your living water and Holy Spirit to flood her soul. Take control of every situation in her life uh, that may trouble her family and grant them supernatural favor and blessings from people in their lives. We pray for Roshane, help her to pass all of her exams and keep her from failure, help her to be successful academically. And now, Holy Father God, we pray for people who have trusted you as Savior through this ministry here at Gospel Light Society International. 
and uh, help them help them to grow in the faith and to be the strong Christians that you want them to be. Rebuke and bind the devil and his demons and his hosts from them and surround them with your protection and a band of your holy angels. We pray for Joseph. We pray for Rick. We pray for a long bar. We pray for Christy. We pray for love. We pray for confidence. And we pray for Zach. And Holy Father God, we pray for those who have recommitted their lives to you. And this is not an invitation that I give when I preach. I only give an invitation for those who, have got, who need to be saved. Uh, but these folks uh, have heard the gospel preached and the word of God preached from this pulpit and, uh, and they have re recommitted their lives. They've come back to you. They have no reason to lie about that. And so we are happy for them and we pray that you'll help them to stand strong in the faith. We pray for O. We pray for Julie. We pray for Donatus. We pray for Bobby. We pray for Subda, Demi. And we pray for patience. We commit these souls into your hands. Let your will be done in their lives and in ours. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Help us to continue to pray for these people throughout this day without ceasing. Amen. And the church said, Amen. <clears throat> Our devotional reading... Pardon me, our devotional reading this morning is titled, Yes, <clears throat> pardon me, Yes, But, exclamation point, from Oswald Chambers. Yes, but suppose God tells you to do something that is an enormous test of your common sense. <clears throat> and God will do this. Pardon me. Totally going against it. What will you do? Will you hold back? If you get into the habit of doing something physically, you will do it every time you are tested until you break the habit through sheer determination. And the same is true spiritually. Again and again, you will come right up to what Jesus wants. But every time you will turn back at the true point of testing until you are determined to abandon yourself to God in total surrender. Yet we tend to say yes but pardon me isn't that true? We tend to say yes but Suppose I do obey God in this matter. What about this? What about that? Or we say, yes, I will obey God if what he asks of me doesn't go against my common sense. But don't ask me to take a step in the dark. Jesus Christ demands the same unrestrained, adventurous spirit in those who have placed their trust in him that the natural man exhibits. Focus. Focus. If a person is ever going to do anything worthwhile, there will be times when he must risk everything by his leap in the dark. In the spiritual realm, Jesus Christ demands that you risk everything you hold on to or believe through common sense and leap by faith 
into what he says. Amen, somebody. Once you obey, you will immediately find that what he says is as solidly consistent as common sense. By the test of common sense, Jesus Christ's statements may seem mad or crazy, but when you test them by the trial of faith, your findings will fill your spirit with the awesome fact that they are the very words of God. Trust completely in God. And when he brings you to a new opportunity of adventure, offering it to you, see that you take it. We act like pagans in a crisis. Only one out of an entire crowd is daring enough to invest his faith in the wonderful character of God Almighty. Amen, somebody. Holy Father God, help us to walk by faith and not by sight today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, dear friend, before uh, we leave you, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, John 3.16 uttered by none other than Jesus Christ says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life amen somebody that's good news I like the phrase of the Billy Graham organization always good news the Bible also says in Romans 10, 9 and 13 that if thou, that if you shall confess with thy mouth, your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart, your heart, that God hath raised Jesus from the dead, thou, you, shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you saved this morning? If you happened upon us out of the blue or you were led, uh, no doubt, by God here this morning and you're not saved, God wants to see you saved. He is not willing that any should perish. And if you want to be saved today, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you believe that he died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose from the dead, and uh, uh, you would simply... Pray and ask him to save you. He'll save you. Uh, the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord uh, shall be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou, you, shalt be saved. It's, it's as simple as that. You don't have to join a church to be saved. You don't have to speak in tongues to be saved. You don't have to jump and shout to be saved. Uh, you don't have to be baptized to be saved. You just need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, we don't want you to be confused about that. And pray and ask him to save you. If you are ready to be saved today, just uh, follow me in prayer, phrase by phrase, and mean it from your heart. Believing in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and a breaker of your laws and commandments. And I understand that I deserve eternal punishment for my sins. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. That he died for my sins. Was buried and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul today as I believe on you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past and turn away from my wicked ways and to follow you for the rest of my life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake. Amen. 
Now, beloved, if you just trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, now, beloved, if you have just trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you prayed that prayer with me, and you meant that, from your heart I declare to you that based upon the Word of God you are now saved from sin and hell and you're on your way to heaven welcome to the family of God I want to congratulate you on doing the most important thing in life and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior for more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ Please go to GospelLightSociety.com and read what to do after you enter through the door. It's a pamphlet I wrote many years ago that will show you exactly what you need to do after you have trusted Christ as Savior. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find a pasture. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen. May the Lord bless you and keep you is my prayer. Holy Father God, bless these who have heard the gospel this morning and those who have received the gospel. Help them to grow in the faith and help them to contact us so that we can help them grow in the faith and disciple them. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. God bless you, dear friend. Until next time.